Hey there, IndyCar fans. This is Nathan Brown, your motorsports reporter with the Indianapolis Star, here joined by uh, last week's runner-up uh, IndyCar I Racing Challenge finisher, uh, Ed Carpenter Racing Driver, Twitch uh, extraordinaire Connor Daly here for another edition of IndyCar Weekly. Connor, how are you doing? Good, man. Um, just ready to still ready to get back to reality <laughs> <laughs> i think we all are all are certainly um got m- maybe one step closer to that this week with the uh sixth and final race of the indycar i racing challenges uh the calendar hopefully starts to gear towards the series starting back up officially uh on june 6th at texas for the season opener those are the plans at the moment. Uh, we hope to learn some more about that possibly later on this week or in the coming weeks, certainly, um, as NASCAR gears up here in a couple weeks. Um, but before we get to all that, uh, let's uh, break down the, the end of the iRacing Challenge, which I know has been an interesting, exciting uh, development to keep some drivers and fans and sponsors uh, busy over these last six weeks since things uh, wound down for the moment when St. Pete uh, was postponed. So we had uh, the final race uh, where uh, a lot of a lot of excitement, a lot of incidents that got talked about, maybe even more so than the, the winner of the race, Scott McLaughlin, uh, who won his second race after taking the victory at Barber about a month ago. Uh, you were there for, uh, you know, a lot of those uh, crashes on that last lap, kind of with uh, them right there in front of you watching them take place. Take me through the uh, last couple laps of that race from your vantage point and uh, what all that looked like and, and how you were able to pull off that second place finish. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, w- it was... It was pretty much the exact opposite of the way we needed it to finish. Um, you know, there, there, the Santino thing is definitely, uh, you know, just, just it, it was just a, it was just a dumb move. There's no other way to put it. I mean, I, I've often, I have done many dumb things in my life. I, I'm absolutely willing to admit that, both in racing and in, in just normal everyday life. And you always, I think, human nature is to always try and immediately find an excuse for that. And there were a couple different ones that he said, but realistically, it was just like I've seen that type of an ending in sim racing before. You know, you get close to a guy, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to take him out because it's going to be funny, and we're both going to slide across the line and finish one two. But realistically, I thought Santino had enough of a run and early enough on the straights where I thought he probably could have won. So that was that was what was even more confusing. Um, and, you know, Oliver Askew didn't deserve that at all. Uh, I mean, he's, you know, the McLaren have put a lot into this sim racing deal. Um, and, and yeah, it was, it, it was just a shame to see that. It was not a great representation for us on TV, uh, you know, in front of, uh, you know, Formula One fans and other fans that have tuned in from other series, obviously with Lando Norris involved. Um, and, and, yeah, I, I don't think... Uh, it's, it's just I just don't get it. Not really sure why. A lot of the other drivers were very upset about it as well, um, and even Simon also. What, what Simon did with Lando and and the fact that you know you've got to realize that everything you say when you're broadcasting on the internet. It, it, yeah, as I as I wore, I wore a shirt the other day that says the internet never forgets, and it's 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 a true, completely true statement. Um, and that was really surprising about Simon. That did, did also didn't make us look good. Didn't make um, just there were no positives to come from that at all. Um, but you know, again, I think everyone is taking this way, 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 way too seriously. And I think this will all be hopefully just gone and destroyed by the time we actually get real race cars on track for the first time. Um, but yeah, just just a tough kind of way to end the the whole championship because i think there was a lot of positives coming from it and i think there was a lot of really good stuff that happened uh you know for our fans for our community for drivers that aren't necessarily full-time like like sage um and scott mclaughlin you know those two guys are obviously really good drivers um and i'm sure scott will be an indycar driver full-time eventually and probably winning races um but until then uh, you know, was, you know, those guys got a lot of attention for their sponsors and their supporters. Certainly with Sage and Dry Rainbow, um, but uh, yeah, 
it was uh, a weird way to end it. And the internet, once you anger a sleeping giant, which is <laughs> Lando Norris fans, um, I've seen it before and it'll happen again. There are certain internet icons, which Lando is definitely an internet icon. He's a huge Twitch streamer. If you get those internet fans behind you, it's like it's like Taylor Swift fans. It's like any of those huge superstars. They will come after you as if you attacked their home base, as if you came to their house and set their yard on fire. Um, and sadly, that's what Simon's going to be dealing with. And that's, uh, you know, it, it, people are insane. Uh, it's great that we've got fans. Love all those fans, but uh, but just don't just don't go. To, they, they, it's, there's there's some people that have just gone a little bit too crazy on the reactions to this stuff. Yeah, for those uh, that are unsure of what we're referring to and, and talking about with Simon, uh, you know he was you know right there toward the front with Graham Ray Hall and Lando Norris, uh, the McLaren Formula One driver there. I think with about ten laps to go. Um, Lando made a move inside uh, in turn two uh, that that turned things into a, a three wide situation there, which you wouldn't certainly typically see uh, at IMS in a, in a real race, and I think kind of caught Graham and Simon a little bit off guard, um, a little unsure on if there was net code involved or if it was just Graham, you know, squeezing over a, a bit more to make sure he didn't hit Lando. Ended up hitting Simon there and. And Simon and his uh, team there were certainly upset and frustrated and felt like, you know, Lando had cost them uh, a shot at winning there. And then there's there's video uh, from them streaming of them of Simon talking about going to uh, leave the pits and, and take out Lando. His and, you know, went around the track twice, uh, looked like he slowed up uh, right around the uh, start of the front stretch there. Claimed he was going toward the pits, uh, but wasn't really uh, making a move that looked like he was heading in that direction. And, and Lando, unfortunately, ran right into the back of him. And and there cost Lando a chance to uh, to win that race, probably. And as you mentioned, the uh, the contingent of Formula One fans were uh, were quite fierce there afterwards on Twitter, on, on lots of social media. And it was really the thing that I think people were talking about more than the fact that for 60 of the 70 laps, it was a really fun, really exciting race. Um, I think was something that was a well done finale outside of a couple of those incidents. But when stuff is, is being broadcast and when stuff, when you're streaming, um, certainly something that you have to keep in mind, whether it's something that you want to think, but certainly can't be something that you actually say. Cause as a, as your t-shirt mentioned, the internet does not ever forget. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, like, people are saying, oh, Lando probably would have won the race. I mean, I, I don't know if I would go that far. I mean, was he leading? Yeah, but there were cars right there. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know if necessarily that would have happened. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, he, he's really good at that stuff. He spent hundreds and hundreds of laps, you know, testing and getting ready and doing his job. But again, we saw, I would say, 90% of the accidents that happened in this iRacing IndyCar series especially on the ovals are from the rookies or from guys who have never raced on an oval. And Lando, to be honest, is one of those guys. Um, so, you know, obviously he's very good. He's a formula one driver, but again, going three wide into turn two, I mean, I certainly didn't see anyone else making those moves and you would never do that in real life. And yes, was the internet part of it? Absolutely. Like the, there was, you, you saw on the replay, I mean, there's huge space, but Lando's playing from the UK, you know, you got Simon and Graham, you know, you also can't see anything. You don't have a real spotter. So it, it, is there a lot more variables than in real life? Absolutely. Like it's, it's, <laughs> there's so much out of your control in a video game, but, uh, but it just, it just, all of it just, again, in, in our current state of affairs, you know, we, we, this is all we have to do and look at, and we can't necessarily, um, talk about anything else. So, so yeah, we're kind of, we're kind of stuck with it. And, um, you know, in the end I had a great time, me and Scotty McLaughlin are celebrating. I was DMing him like crazy because we're laughing our faces off looking at everyone else there, they're, they're. they're their, their reputations and their internet presences are burning to the ground, and we're just like, hey, that was a great time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're right. Certainly, uh, for McLaughlin in particular, I mean, we already had uh, a good idea. Folks that are you know f tuned in well into the IndyCar scene 
had already gotten an idea of who he was when you know it was announced that he would be running at the the Grand Prix and he was running some testing with Team Penske even before the season was going to get underway but uh, you know, beyond Sage Karam, who is you know still a, a part-time driver that I think, for the most part, um, you know had a, a really strong showing in all of this, winning the first race and and being up there at the front just about every other race uh, for for some sig- very significant stints. Um, McLaughlin, I think, was was one of the big winners in all of this. Uh, a lot of a lot of folks, if they didn't already know his name, certainly do now. And I think uh, Team Penske has. Um, a lot of people really excited to see when he's finally able to make an actual uh, physical IndyCar debut, whether that's at this year's Grand Prix, whether it's at another race this year, whether it's in 2021. Uh, I think people will will be you know, very highly uh, anticipated for, for no, whenever he makes his debut. Um, all in all, from, from the start of all of this six weeks ago to the finish, um, as someone who hadn't done a whole lot of eye racing, uh, very recently and, uh, who was certainly didn't shy away from the fact that, um, you know, you hadn't put an, a whole lot of money into your rig, uh, as, as other people had, what was your just kind of general impression about, uh, you know, the benefits and the takeaways that came from this series, uh, from a, you know, a big picture IndyCar perspective? I mean, big picture to, to keep it, you know, not too long and, and drawn out. I, I mean, I think it was great. I, I think we were the only series already that doesn't have an eSports series. You know, NASCAR already has one. You know, the, the, the pro invitational stuff that they're doing, you know, they already have teams with professional, you know, drivers, well, professional game drivers uh, on their team. So, you know, they've got that going. Formula One has the same thing. Each Formula One team has their own esports team. Um, and I think IndyCar needs the same thing. And I hope that this is, you know, something to potentially, uh, you know, get the gears, uh, gears turning a little bit there on that. And I certainly wouldn't mind leading the way uh, somehow there. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think uh, it put a lot of us into a very interesting position. Um, you know, when it comes to our internet presence, I think there was, I thoroughly enjoyed hearing a lot of the guys that, you know, I obviously know, but I, I just, I I saw us all, you know, with open mics able to communicate with each other, um, you know, on a regular basis. And I, I think that was hysterical. Obviously my guys, uh, you know, Alex Hinch and, uh, and Ed, you know, we all know each other pretty well already, but having those guys around, it, it sort of, kept me sane a little bit, you know, actually interacting, not in person, but, you know, through Discord, through the app that we use to talk to each other, you know, that was really nice. Um, and, and yeah, I think there's, there, there's a lot that went on that was very interesting. Um, but, but realistically we got some TV time. Heck, we even had Sage on sports center, uh, after the first one, which was, uh, which is wild. So, um, that was really cool. And, and yeah, I'm just glad everyone participated, honestly. Love the fact that every driver, most drivers, uh, you know, were participating. I think really everyone, but at least one or two, uh, did most of the events. And, and having guest drivers, I think, like Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jr., you know, I, it was cool. I, I got to talk to Dale Jr. quite a lot after Michigan. You know, he was, he was really cool. It was nice to talk with him. Um, you know, he really enjoyed his time, uh, you know, getting to compete with us there. And, and Jimmy Johnson, I know, loved it. He had a great time. Uh, Lando, I think it's obviously questionable on whether he had a great time. But, um, but yeah, it was just it was cool to kind of mix it up a little bit. Fun to um, just have at least something. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I think, again, towards the end, it, it did seem like we are we're, – we're all going a little bit stir-crazy. So, um, <laughs> Mentally, I think we were all falling off a cliff at Indy, so I think um, we're all ready to get back to the real steering wheel. Is there any chance, uh, either any chance, either you think it could happen, or is it something that you would enjoy having? Any sort of, you know, all drivers discord as far as when actual race is going. I know it's not something, even if IndyCar thought it was a good idea, which I don't know that they do. Was, certainly wouldn't see something in the near future, but it certainly it, it brought up an idea 
you know, considering all of the the interesting conversations and outbursts that we did get to see and the media attention that some of that got, so at least brought up uh, an interesting thought that that could be something that would be uh, really fun to see potentially down the road. Well, I mean, to be totally honest, uh, I, I don't think you can do that in the real world. But but what we do have access to is is the in in car radios. You know what I mean? Um, the in car radio system works actually quite well and i think a lot of it's pretty clear but they don't play a ton of it on the tv broadcast maybe you just play more of that uh, but having having said that as well honestly there are a lot of drivers who don't communicate that much on the radio i think i think the light-hearted situation of simulator racing certainly promoted more communication uh and there's also you know you can't say certain words on television <laughs> so you know there are a lot of words that that were used um, even in my Discord, you know, people are cursing for sure. Like, you know, Jay, I don't, but James, Alex, even Ed, uh, you know, threw out the occasional dirty word. But you know what? It's because we're racing and we're competitive, and we definitely would say that stuff in the real car. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there's an opportunity to maybe look into, uh, you know, more in-car communication like NASCAR does under yellow with their leader or their certain drivers in the field. Um, I think we can certainly do more of that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, maybe, you know, maybe we'll get a couple guys every now and then when the season does kick, keep going, you know, maybe we'll do some more sim racing together and we'll get in, you know, some, some group, group events that are kind of fun. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Is this something that you think can survive or have some sort of a presence that's actually truly organized by IndyCar and include actual drivers when we, we get to whatever this off season or future off seasons look like i know you guys just you guys spend really truly a lot of time you know testing the tracks and practicing and and trying to get ready to put on as good of a show as you possibly can uh, given that this was all on nbc sports i know a lot of people are are projecting what this future of i racing with indy car drivers can and can't look like um do you have a sense of if this truly was kind of just a one-time thing or if we'll see any more of this when we get to off seasons in the future? Um, I think it's definitely worth looking into to do something during the off season because realistically our off season is super long. Um, this one was obviously extended by quite a lot and, <laughs> and this next off season will be a quite a lot shorter. I obviously hope and assume. Um, but you know, when, let's say end of 2021, you know, into 2022. Yes. You know, maybe that off season, once things get back to normal, um, you know, we have something like this where maybe not all the drivers, you know, participate because I highly doubt, uh, all of them will participate. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think there's something to be talked about. I think we do have some real life data now on what happens when all your drivers actually participate in something on the internet. Um, you know, we do have things to look at there. So I think it'll be up to really IndyCar. They've got to hire some more people. They've got to get, you know, they've got to get back up on their feet in general. But, um, but yeah, it's certainly an option for the future. Yeah. Um, one of the interesting things that's, that's cropped up in all of this, you've not only had drivers participating in, you know, the official IndyCar iRacing challenge, you've had, um, you know, some, some midweek stuff going on, whether it's organized by TV networks or not. I know Joseph Newgarden has, has done some interesting things on Forza. You and, uh, and as you mentioned, your crew of, of Rossi Hinch and Ed and some other drivers have this uh, last chance qualifier league that's going on. Uh, started last night, uh, Monday night on, on May 4th. Tell us a little bit more about what that is, what you guys are hoping that uh, turns into and, and kind of the format of, of all of that? Well, honestly, it, the, the coolest part about this quarantine, which is, um, you know, it, it's, it's been tough. It's terrible. It sucks overall. Trust me. I, I, that's, that, that is exactly right. But somehow I've developed this friendship with Travis Pastrana, who is a absolute hero of mine. And that's, it's really thanks to Alex Rossi and Liza, his, um, his life manager, um, or personal assistant or whatever you call it. Um, but, uh, she, she has obviously a lot of the connections in the rally cross world and all that stuff. And, um, Travis, Travis has been looking for stuff to do. He's obviously got simulators at the, at the, at his compound at his house. 
um, and the Nitro Circus, you know, crew, the Nitro Circus uh, social media entity, just Nitro Circus in general is a massive brand. Um, and they wanted to, you know, put some entertainment out there. So the fact that Travis, you know, jumped in, jumped in our Discord with us for the Rally Cross events that we've been doing, uh, you know, it started to really generate a buzz. We've all been, we've all been having a hilarious time. Um, and so we decided to start up our own little thing because people on the internet seem to really enjoy us all communicating. So we started a group text not too long ago. You know, me, Travis, Chad Reed, um, James Hinchcliffe, Alex Rossi. I mean, those guys, I mean, I'm the least accomplished out of any of those guys, obviously. Um, but, I mean, Chad Reed is a guy who I've known for so many years as a fan because I was number 22 when I was growing up. And, and when I won the Pro Mazda Championship, I was 22, uh, number 22. Uh, and, and he was always number 22. And it was, you know, it was so cool to watch. You know, I always love watching Supercross. And the same with Travis. I mean, Travis is just an icon. I mean, such an incredible, doing the coolest stuff ever all the time. Um, and, and so, you know, to get those guys together was was so awesome. I think the fact that they want to use my Twitch channel as well to be able to put that out there was was really just, I mean, it's, it's, it's an honor uh, to, to kind of host those guys. Um, so, yeah, we've had a lot of fun with it. It's basically a total random, not serious um, event in any way, but we try to get the Twitch community involved. We try to get the fans watching involved. You know, they can vote on whether or not we do a competition caution in the middle of the race. And, you know, each we, we do three different races a night, um, every Monday night, and it's random cars picked by, uh, picked by one of the iRacing um, guys, Chris. Uh, and, you know, the first night was 410 wing sprint cars uh, at, at Charlotte Dirt Track, Dirt Oval. Uh, and then it was Legends cars at Bristol, the Oval, um, and then the I think Porsche Cayman GT fours at Tsukuba Circuit in Japan. Uh, and so it was quite a diverse mix of you know of, of fun different cars and tracks. Um, and it's just a way for us to kind of you know do things differently. We got we got Ed Carpenter as well involved, my boss, which is hilarious, and Brandon Semenik, who's um, who's a Red Bull athlete as well. Uh, a very accomplished Red Bull athlete. Um, and I think we're going to try and open it up to, you know, some random guest drivers. We don't want to get it too, you know, we don't want to get too many people every weekend, but um, a lot of people have expressed interest in getting involved. Uh, so it'll be funny to kind of see how it progresses. Um, but really the core group, the team discord or whatever it is, um, is, uh, is, is something I'm never going to forget for sure. So it'll be, it's, it's been fun. It'll be every Monday, at least until the world gets back to normal. And, um, and we'll see how it goes. How does this points system work? I was seeing Rossi tweeting a little bit about, you know, uh, some sort of a leaderboard. Um, and I wasn't exactly sure, uh, what those points were, were all entirely tied to, uh, for folks who were seeing that and, and didn't quite understand how the whole thing was organized. I have no idea how the points work, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's, basically, we get on there, and Liza manages the points. So I assume it's like 10 points to win. The last race was worth double points, so that flipped the championship on its head. Um, and realistically, we could, if the chat in Twitch says they want triple points in the last event, well, then we'll do triple points. Who knows? Um, it's just a way to get people involved. And, you know, we might even might even open it up to – you know, some Twitter voting or something like that on on tracks we should do and car combos. Um, but yeah, the cars as well. It's been kind of funny. You know, we've we've put our, our our sponsors on there. You know, Travis had a had a sponsorship with Yokohama, and you know, I obviously had U.S. Air Force. We put Ed Carpenter's car sponsors on there. You know, Hinch with Genesis, Alex with Auto Nation, and Napa. So like, we're, again, we're trying to put our sponsors out there, but the cars are kind of painted like the old IROC series cars were. You know, two solid colors. Um, you know, there's a little bit of branding on them, but really it's just to kind of separate, uh, you know, each of our cars looks and, and it's cool to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, I, I got to thank, you know, Liza and Chris Leone at, at, uh, at iRacing who's really helped us, um, you know, pull this together. Cause honestly, the first one was way more organized than I thought it was going to be. Uh, and, and that was, it, it was truly, truly a lot of fun. What has been the response or, or just kind of the. Uh, effect that you've noticed 
on your your Twitch following um, outside of the the iRacing community when you're hopping on, you know, to play Call of Duty or or other things in your spare time. I mean, do you have even more of an engaged, interactive uh, group of followers on there now than you did pre iRacing? How has all of this, as someone who's really embraced uh, the the social media and Twitch side of all of this, when it has come to iRacing, what is what has this effect been on just kind of your life outside of IndyCar? Well, the, the, looking at the analytics that that Twitch provides, um, you know, it's really cool to see. There, there's been a lot of followers. A lot of um, you know, a lot of contributions to the Twitch stream, which is really cool. A lot of a lot of really dedicated subscribers as well. So um, it, it, it's been really cool to see, and it's something that I definitely want to keep up with. The, the The thing about Twitch is once you're you know once you get to a certain level of streaming and you're kind of you know you're you're doing it so often, the community that supports you wants to see you quite often. So like you know, I'm going to have to definitely plan on streaming you know almost every week. Uh, to keep the community that I've built engaged, um, which I totally don't mind. You know, I, I, I am a gamer. Um, I think once we get going here, it's going to be pretty difficult to, um, you know, to keep up with streaming. But, uh, but I definitely plan on, on doing it in some way, shape, or form. And uh, it's, it's been cool. I, I really appreciate those who have jumped in. I know it'll, it's probably new for a lot of different people. Um, that, that either follow me on Twitter or Instagram. It's definitely a um, it's definitely a different form of social media, but uh, but it's 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 really cool. Very cool. Um, kind of pivoting a little bit uh, outside of the uh, the virtual racing scene, we do of course uh, we'll begin to see the return of real racing to racetrack starting on May seventeenth as NASCAR returns to Darlington. Four series of uh, two races at that track on May 17th and I believe May 20th, followed by a two-race series at Charlotte uh, May 24th and uh, May 27th. As NASCAR gets going here, uh, IndyCar hopefully not too far behind. Um, as, as we started to hear some of this news about NASCAR officially announcing its return and, and setting up the first handful of races that it would have on its return to uh the the real racetracks what were some of your thoughts uh on on how this has been announced that it will unfold with nascar trying to to come back at these tracks at in north and south carolina well i think honestly it's exciting uh it's 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 the first kind of real step towards at least uh, a, a somewhat more normal reality than we've all been living in for the last month and a half or whatever it is, 50 days or something like that. Um, so is it, is it going to be really important to see how that goes? Yeah. I, th- I think it's, 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 we're in unprecedented times. I mean, to have that many races in that many days, you know, it just two separate facilities, you know, it, it's, and, and with the restrictions that they're implementing, I mean, you, you, it's gotta be done. Right. But it's my gosh. I, I, I mean, racing is hard like it, it's it you need your practice like you need qualifying I, I don't know how i don't know how they're gonna go straight into the race to be totally honest i mean i, I just don't see how that's physically possible even without like a five minute warm-up or a 10 minute you know do some laps to make sure your engine is in the car correctly you know what <laughs> i mean i don't know there's there's a lot that that i have questions about but i also applaud them for having you know a strategy of of, of you know sticking to what they what they want to do there um and, and to be honest like I, I i'm fairly confident that you know when we get to texas in june you know our series officials will have done all the you know appropriate thinking that needs to be done to get us back on track uh safely and appropriately um but what having said that i mean i'm hearing a lot about you know texas potentially being even a one-day event or something that's shortened uh i mean you've got a lot of rookies and a lot of young kids who have just come to IndyCar and a lot of drivers that have just been sitting around on video games for the last three months, four months. I mean, Texas is hard, both physically, mentally. Um, there is no room for error at Texas at all. Uh, and, and I just, I think it is very dangerous, um, to, to kind of just jump in like that. 
Uh, I mean, I obviously don't care because I, I feel like I've got, you know, quite a lot of experience and thankfully this will be the first time ever in my IndyCar career. I will get to do the same race with the same team two years in a row. So, uh, it'll, it'll be a very different experience for me and I'm excited about it, but I just, I, I, I just feel bad for some of the rookies because normally you go through, you know, three weeks at Indy, so much oval practice, so much oval, um, you know, experience before you get to Texas well, now you got to get straight into Texas and do, you know, 268 laps on the high banks. And it's it's physically challenging. Texas, I think, is one of the most physically difficult races of the year. Last year was so much more physically challenging than people thought. Um, and now we've got the aero screen as well, which is totally new. Uh, so there's just so many things that people are either going to have to really dive deep into their brains for the ability to be smart um, or, you know, it, it just should it should prevent present quite an interesting situation potentially a first time winner or it'll just be you know the big teams dominate because they have so much information and so much you know they're, they've probably already been working for three weeks but we don't even know it you know <laughs> <laughs> i guess maybe the one the one thing we can hopefully fall back on when you're talking about some of those rookies if i if memory serves me right i think Texas is where they held their oval rookie test uh, earlier this year. I think it was in February. Um, so at least some of those guys have gotten a chance to run on that track. Obviously, it wasn't in a ton of traffic. Um, the the circumstances, the pressure, everything is going to be you know going to be totally different. That one day, as you mentioned, that one day event is going to be really tough. I know from talking to Eddie Gossage myself a couple weeks ago his idea when he kind of walked through what that one day event would look like the the biggest reason for it certainly was you know just tr to try and avoid drivers going having to go to you know drivers and and personnel having to go to you know their their homes or hotels or leaving a track in any sort to get food so that once everyone arrived on on scene early early saturday morning that people would get tested and observed and and once people would be in that that virtual bubble if you will that hopefully uh everything inside that would be contained but it does it does put a, a lot of pressure on on the drivers for you guys you know traveling down there racing and, and traveling back in a single day uh along with the crew members and, and everything so that's, I guess, the plan that we have to go with now, hoping that we'll find out some more details maybe later on this week or, or early next. You'd think that uh, we probably would at some point, given the fact that NASCAR is starting to come back and teams are going to have to start planning for whatever that race at Texas might, uh, might possibly look like. Just the idea of being able to come back, though, whether regardless of of what that race would look like. I, I imagine for you and for all of the drivers, that's got to, once we hear that official okay, that's going to be some sort of a, a sigh of relief, no matter how difficult the day is going to end up being. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of, lot of pressure on um on nascar for sure because we don't i i, I obviously you know we we care for their safety as well i mean the racing community is a family right so i i hope that those you know everyone there is, is respectful of the rules for sure and uh it's gonna be hard i mean it's i mean just thinking of all you just said about texas is uh well, it's i mean it sounds terrible honestly but uh I, I, I still don't even see how it's possible. You know, what if, if one car crashes in the events that night, I mean, even if they have a failure of some kind, it's not even the driver's fault. I mean, you just lose that championship event. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's a wild thing to think about. Um, but you know, we're, we're in unprecedented times where the drivers have to, you know, think about that themselves. Um, you know, when they're going out there and, and making the moves they're going to make. Um, but yeah, the, the NASCAR thing is going to be interesting. I'm certainly going to be watching. I think honestly, the world's going to be watching, um, just to see how it goes and see how we do. But I'm, I'm confident in our, um, you know, our leadership and, uh, you know, I, I just can't wait to get back to hanging with my guys, you know, hanging with the crew guys, uh, you know, first off, obviously Carlin, uh, and then at, and then ECR. Um, but, uh, it'll be, you know, it'll be, it'll just be a really satisfying feeling. I think, I think the morale of everyone will go up quite a lot when we all kind of see each other again at a distance, of course, but, um, 
you know, working together again with the guys, your family, your racing family is, uh, is going to be a really rewarding experience. I think, I mean, I, I, I really have, uh, have to think, and I've, and I've said this and I've heard some other people echo this just with the fact, the way, uh, the way IndyCar's calendar has panned out in, in setting this up, obviously NASCAR wanted to get back absolutely as soon as possible because they have that 36 race schedule that they're still hoping to squeeze in all of this year. Uh, and so for them hopping in the the middle of May, I guess made sense for IndyCar, you know, Detroit just wasn't going to be feasible given the fact that it was a, uh, a street course event. And obviously, uh, they decided to, to postpone the Grand Prix and the 500. So if you're IndyCar, you get a chance to watch NASCAR hold these events again and again four times. Uh, you got to think that folks like Mark Miles and Roger Penske and Jay Fry will probably be on hand there to watch and take notes and talk to folks and, and just kind of observe how this initial return for NASCAR goes to try and get a better idea of what to do and what not to do when hopefully we return to Texas and, uh, and then I obviously ideally road America and Richmond and, and beyond. Um, so I think, I think with IndyCar, you have a lot of chance still to be patient and to learn and kind of fine tune whatever their plan is that they come up with, um, rather than, having to be the the first ones that go about it everyone everyone certainly wants to be first but i think you also want to do things the right way and, and maybe this is kind of the best of both worlds in a lot of ways for indycar yeah i mean i i, I don't know if our i mean i don't know if our if our indycar officials will be allowed to be at the nascar race for that's personnel you certainly know, that's personnel. certainly possible you're right but um but with that without a doubt they're going to be in communication i think this year, more than ever, I think our, you know, our series, albeit competitors, I mean, I think we've already got one, you know, race in conjunction scheduled together. Uh, I think there's going to have to be some, you know, some some working together in in many different areas and, and, and potentially, uh, you know, with this initial, you know, startup of, of racing, I think we're all going to have to relay information as much as possible. We're going to have to figure out you know the best ways to do things but i just i I can't wait to get back i mean i I don't care um you know i don't care who you are right now it's it's definitely getting to a point where it's like hey uh especially because i feel like i've been really responsible i feel like i've been staying inside and i've been doing my part to you know try and help help uh you know help help stay safe and um, and I really didn't think I'd be able to, I thought I'd be trying to go hang out with people and stuff like that, but I, I really did take this seriously and really want to make sure that, um, you know, when your job and your dream is on the line and you're, and you're, if potentially you can play a part in, in being safer and do things the right way, uh, to get everyone, you know, your, your racing family, your real family, get everyone back to work, then, uh, you got to do it. So that's, that's what I've tried to do. Yeah. I think, you know, we've seen, IndyCar teams and IndyCar manufacturers and partners and sponsors, you know, really band together in in some really positive ways uh, around this crisis. With uh, you know, folks at Delara making some uh, some PPE for medical officials. You've got folks at Andretti and and Honda and Chevy and all different places um, have really been doing their part in in being active in this, but. The, as you mentioned, the same thing is you also have to kind of be passive and stay back and, and hopefully in the state of Indiana and the states that uh, we're going to, to run some races, we'll see the same thing and, and be able to hold some races. Uh, and certainly when, when and if things come back to IMS for that July 4th weekend partnership, as you mentioned, with NASCAR and IndyCar, it could be something, uh, kind of this, this partnership with both series working together to help each other uh, get through in some way, shape, or form this 2020 season could be something really, really exciting to see. Um, what, what, what are your uh, or what do you imagine your plans will be for that uh, May 24th date when we certainly would have liked to have been racing at uh, on the Oval at IMS? Um. It, I just 
I just think this year in general is thinking about every race differently. Uh, although there are obviously some races that are their same dates, um, you know, there, there are, all, I think we have to look at several races that still could be affected. You know, every state's going to be different. Uh, we've, we obviously go to Canada as well, and I don't know, you know, what Toronto's situation is going to be at the end of June. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's going to be, I think there's going to be a lot of interesting hurdles to cross before we even get to August or, or our July 4th race. You know, the governor came out in Indiana and was talking about July 4th being a, you know, a weekend where, where things are, things are maybe getting back to a little bit close to normal. And, and I love that. I think it's a great weekend to celebrate. It's a great weekend for all of us to go racing and, and have an incredible time and hopefully have some people there too. Um, but realistically we've got to make sure that you know we get through july and well june july um because august is you know august is the uh that's that's the big one i mean we've got to make sure that when we get to august you know things are still going the right way we're we're we're, we're, we're safe we're we're able to do our jobs even more efficiently than than when we could when we started this whole thing um and so yeah i i I don't know how it's going to go. I really don't. I mean, things change every day, but I, I see a lot more positive things now happening than, than negative. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the morale boost that seeing sports kick off again, um, you know, morale is often, uh, I, I think that helps a lot of people's situations. I think that helps people's mental, uh, mental approach to things. I think it helps people, uh, you know, get out of a rut potentially and you know seeing sports kick off and seeing you know motorsports certainly motorsport fans i think will be super happy about it um but uh, but yeah we got to do it right and uh, hopefully we can keep it going for the rest of the year yeah as we move further down the calendar after after texas which hopefully will still run in in some form on june 6th you've got road america which i know folks over there are hoping that because the you know the facility is so widespread that maybe possibly you know, they'd be allowed to, to have fans, which would then bring them the, the revenue that would maybe allow them to then be able to hold the race without any sort of, you know, changes or deals regarding the, uh, the sanctioning fee. After that, you have Richmond, uh, which, the, you know, the, becomes another track that folks have talked about along with Texas as a track that needs a, a race made up uh, where maybe there could potentially be a, a double header type thing there uh, between NASCAR and IndyCar if there weren't still allowed to be fans in Virginia to kind of help ease some of the financial burdens for the track promoters at Richmond. And then you, of course, as you mentioned, we come to the July 4th weekend with the, uh, the GMR Grand Prix and the Brickyard 400 on back-to-back days. Hopefully it will be a really exciting weekend at IMS where we can all celebrate uh, where ideally fans in some sort might be able to be at the track, uh, and if nothing else, be able to see racing return to uh, to the w- racing capital of, of the world uh, and be a, an exciting event to see these two series come together uh, for a partnership for possibly the first time. Uh, with, uh, with iRacing out of the way and with racing still not entirely back what do you plan on uh filling some of your uh now freed up time with connor well honestly i i, I still i already have two i racing oval races scheduled uh one for tomorrow wednesday night uh at daytona with you know with actually quite a cast of drivers it's it's the um it's the league that we've been doing every now and then. Uh, Speed Fifty One has been broadcasting it. Chad Frankenfield is the guy who's really been uh, heading it. He's been he's been really cool. Um, and so, as far as I know, it's you know Kyle Busch is doing it. You know Gab or Gabby Chavez, a ton of IndyCar drivers. Austin Dillon, um, uh, like basically, it's a mix between half NASCAR and half IndyCar. And, uh, and some sim racers as well. So yeah, that's going to be really cool. And then we're racing at Fontana, I think, like May 10th or May 11th, something like that. Um, so I'll still be doing some high racing, but uh, mainly switching back over to Call of Duty, getting that going. <laughs> um, but realistically, just going to try and find things to do, you know, when it comes to getting ready for Texas. Uh, you know, I've already been texting my engineer down at Carlin uh, just to see what we can start th- thinking about doing. Um, I know the... F- the Chevy simulator reopens at some point um, this month. And I know we are probably spending at least two days on that um, as soon as we can. 
Uh, obviously, we're doing that in, in the safest possible manner. That's in Charlotte. I think we're probably going to drive there instead of fly. Um, but uh, but the Chevy simulator is going to be super, super important to get back on because that's going to be the closest thing we've got to, to real life. Um, and, and yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Try to stay fit. I'm going to try and go out to Newcastle Motorsport Park at some point, the go-kart track, uh, sneak out there by myself potentially and do some social distance testing. Um, but go-karting is really – I mean – the fact that there's a ton of guys, a ton of NASCAR guys out in Charlotte doing go-kart running right now is, is I'm super jealous of. Um, obviously, they've had a bit of a different plan out there. and uh, You know, Will Power has been out there. And a ton of NASCAR guys are out there today even. So that's going to be super important. Go-karting, shifter karting is going to be the, the best thing that we can do to keep fit and stay ready for uh, a real race car. So hopefully we can get some of that in as well. Awesome. Well, I think that uh, – that w- ends our time here on another edition of IndyCar Weekly. Certainly continue to follow all of our IndyCar coverage as we continue to follow all of the news around that series and its return, ideally to uh, not just the virtual world, but the uh, real-life racing world as well as NASCAR returns here on May 17th with IndyCar hopefully following closely behind at Texas on June 6th for Connor Daly. I'm Nathan Brown, IndyScar Motorsports reporter. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.